Hey, this is Mr. Perez. Today we're going to review some pre-algebra topics, the opposite of a number and the absolute value of a number. But before we get started, let's get up. Charlie, he better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? Yeah. All right. We're going to review some pre-algebra. We're going to talk about the opposite and the absolute value. Okay. Now, Charlie, in beginning algebra, we often refer to the opposite of a number as the additive inverse. Okay. And it's the same thing. The opposite means the same thing as the additive inverse. So let's bring our number line up right there. Okay, we're gonna talk about the additive inverse or the opposite of a number, Charlie. Now, look at the two numbers here, six and negative six, Charlie. Let's see if you remember your pre-algebra. What's the opposite of six? Negative six. That's right. What's the opposite of negative six? Six. That's right. How do we calculate the opposite, Charlie? Uh-huh. <laughs> Well, let me remind you, to calculate the opposite of a number, you just multiply by negative 1. It's the same thing with the additive inverse. It's the same thing, right? How do you find the additive inverse of a number? Well, you multiply it by negative 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and review. Well, notice here, how many units is 6 away from 0, Charlie? 6. That's right. Similarly, negative 6 is also 6 units from 0, right? That's why they're opposites or additive inverses of each other. They're the same distance from 0 on either side of on the number line, right? Okay, so what is the additive inverse of six, Charlie? Negative six. Negative six, very nice. And so, how do we calculate the additive inverse of six? Multiply by negative one, that's right. So we have negative one times six. Remember, which is written more concisely this way, negative one times six, which is negative six. So negative six and six are additive inverses of each other, right? And so obviously if you add the two together, negative six plus six, you do get a sum of zero, right? Okay, now Charlie, what is the additive inverse of negative six? Six. That's right. And so how do you calculate the additive inverse? Multiply by negative, that's right. So to calculate the additive inverse of negative six, we take negative one times negative six, right? Which is written more concisely as negative one times negative six. And remember, a negative times a negative is a positive, so we do get six. And so the additive inverse of negative six is six, right? They're additive inverses of each other. And so if we find the sum of six and a negative six, we do get zero. Remember, six plus a negative six, the same as six subtract six, right? Okay, now let's move on. Let's go to the absolute value of a number. Now remember, Charlie, absolute values are always positive. Why? Now, you better start revealing your pre-algebra. Absolute values represent distances. Like, like if somebody asks you, hey, how far is, is it from here to uh, my dad's house? You're not going to say negative 48 miles, right? You always say positive, right? That's why absolute values are always positive because they represent distances on this number line here. Watch. So what is the absolute value of negative eight, Charlie? So pay attention here. Well, negative eight is how many units from zero on the number line? Eight, eight units. So the absolute value of negative eight is simply asking you, how far is negative eight from zero on the number line? And the answer is eight. Well, how do we write this mathematically? Absolute values are a grouping symbol, right? It falls in the order of operations in the parentheses category, right? Parentheses and grouping symbols. Remember the PEMDAS? Okay. And so absolute value of negative 8 is these two bars right here, the negative 8 there, and it is actually equal to 8 because it's asking you what's the distance between negative 8 and 0 on the number line? And clearly it's 8, right? Okay. Well, what's the absolute value of 8, Charlie? How far is 8 from 0 on the number line? 8. eight. Of course, they're both positive 8. Okay, so let's do some problems. Answer true or false, Charlie? The absolute value of negative six is less than or equal to negative one times negative six, right? Remember that right hand side is negative one times negative six. In other words, you're calculating the additive inverse of negative six, which we should now know is six, right? Okay, let's work through this. So what's the absolute value of negative six, Charlie? Six. That's right. Now, remember, negative one times negative six, negative times negative is positive, so what is it, Charlie? Six. Six, that's right. Now, six is less than or equal to six. True or false? True. Very nice there, Charlie. That is true. All right, let's do some more. Answer true or false, Charlie. 
4, subtract the absolute value of negative 6 is less than negative 2, subtract negative 5. Don't get scared. Now, on the left-hand side, Charlie, we have to follow order of operations. Remember, parentheses or grouping symbols comes first. Absolute value is a grouping symbol. So, what is the absolute value of negative 6, Charlie? 6. That's right, 6. So, bring down your work. Now, it becomes 4, subtract 6. Now, on the right-hand side, notice we have negative 2, subtract negative 5. What happens when we subtract a negative number, Charlie? Add its opposite. Right, we add its opposite. So, negative 2 plus 5. Now, what's 4 subtract 6? Negative 2. Okay, what's negative 2 plus 5? 3. Very nice there, Charlie. Now, look at your number line. Negative 2 is less than 3. True or false? True. True. Negative 2 is to the left of the 3, right? All right. Very nice there, Charlie. Let's do another one here. Now, don't get scared. Remember, this is red. Negative 1 times the absolute value of negative 3, right, is greater than or equal to negative 1 times negative 3. Now remember, it's written concisely. So, let me write, out, write it out a little bit more um, expanded for you. See, the left-hand side really means negative 1 times the absolute value of negative 3. The right-hand side is negative 1 times negative 3. Now, here's where you've got to be careful especially on the left-hand side. Order of operations. The first thing you have to do is the parentheses or grouping symbols, and that's where absolute value falls, right? So on the left-hand side, you must evaluate the absolute value of negative 3 before you multiply by the negative 1, okay? So Charlie, what's the absolute value of negative 3? 3. 3. And then bring down your work. There it is. Negative 1 times 3. Now on the right-hand side, negative 1 times negative 3 is what? Positive three. 3. Now, we still got to work that left-hand side up. Negative 1 times 3 is what, Charlie? Negative 3. Negative 3. And so there we go. Now, here it comes. Answer true or false. Negative 3 is greater than or equal to 3. False. Very nice there, Charlie. That's false, right? Just look at a number line. Remember, negative 3 is over here and 3 is over there. And so negative 3 is actually less than a positive 3. And so that statement there, negative 3 greater than or equal to 3 is false. Anyway, that's enough for today. We'll see you all again soon.